Okay, well, good day, everybody. And I'd like to welcome you to our high tech uh, presentation. My name is Bob Sampolsky. I'm the Dean of STEM and Health Careers at Oakton Community College. Uh, Oakton is located just north of O'Hare Field outside Chicago. I'm the uh, one of the co-PIs for the National Center for Supply Chain Automation, as well as a co-PI on the collaboration of Midwest professionals for logistics, engineering, technology education, NSF project. We'll be referring to that as the complete grant. I'm joined uh, with, by Ned Young. Ned, Ned is a professor of management and MIS at Sinclair Community College in Dayton, Ohio. Ned is also a co-PI for the National Center as well as the complete grant. Um, from Columbus State, we're joined by Jeremy Benta. Jeremy is the assistant professor and program coordinator uh, of supply chain management. Uh, Jeremy is the PI of the complete grant. And uh, Jeremy is joined by Chris Dennis, who is a lead supply chain management instructor at Columbus State Community College, um, and also works on the, on the complete grant as well. Uh, we'd like to provide you with some of the history of these various projects and NSF uh, centers that we've been working with that address technology training for supply chain technicians. In July of 2016, the National Center PI, Kevin Fleming, suggested that I attend a supply chain technology conference at Navy Pier in Chicago. I recall it was the summer of the Pokemon Go phenomenon, and the conference uh, buzz was how everybody was trying to place marketing tools upon the Pokemon paths to transform game players into paying customers. Uh, I visited the conference expo and I met staff from Columbus State Community College and I was very interested in their logistics engineering technology curriculum that promoted IT support for supply chain um, automation. Ned Young and I, along with Jeremy and Chris, submitted NSF proposals to continue that work and how th these efforts have interacted with the National Center's curriculum is our story that we'd like to share with you. So we're going to ask Columbus State to tell their part of the story first, and I'll invite Jeremy and Chris to take over at this point. Uh, Chris, I believe you're going first in the presentation. Yes. Okay, so there is going to be absolutely a gap here because it is not giving me, when I go to share the screen, the LET presentation isn't an option. So why is that? Okay, I see. Okay. Thank you very much, Bob. So today I wanna to talk to you about our logistics engineering technology program at Columbus State Community College. Professor Banta and I will talk about the program as well as how it relates to the complete grant. So what is logistics? First, that's a question we get asked quite often. And the way we explain logistics to our students is it's the part of the supply chain that plans, implements, and controls the forward and reverse movement of goods and services through the supply chain. Why is logistics important in Columbus? Well, Columbus is a 10 hour drive, a one day drive from 47% of the US population 47% of US manufacturing capacity, as well as 48% of US headquarters uh, of US operations. We're also that same 10 hour drive from roughly 30% of Canadian manufacturing capacity. That's why logistics and supply chain management is very important in central Ohio. These are just some of the companies that operate in central Ohio. And there are many more that aren't listed here. One, namely Honda, not and all the support companies that uh, are the all the suppliers that support Honda. As you can see here, the top 15 logistics companies in Columbus employ over 32,000 people, and this number keeps growing. This is why this industry is important in Central Ohio. So these companies came to us, and. They came to us asking for supply chain automation technicians. We uh, named the program Logistics Engineering Technology. And 
because Central Ohio is one of the largest and fastest growing supply chain sectors in the country. It accounts for more than 9% of the jobs in Central Ohio and the earnings for a supply chain automation technician or a logistics engineering technician uh, are between 50 and $70,000 a year, even to start. We've seen students start in that range right after getting their two-year associate's degree at Columbus State Community College. So with the advice of our local employers, uh, 20, uh, 20 or more, we wanted to pre prepare students to be supply chain managers, engineering technicians, systems analysts. So what we did using both in-person and uh, virtual modes of uh, education, we combined our supply chain classes with IT coursework, as well as basic engineering coursework to get these students this experience before going out into the workforce and get it, giving these students knowledge that the supply chain program wasn't giving before. And also we work to, uh, we have a program, a standing program at the college called MMWS, which is the Modern Manufacturing Work Study. And the LET program was added to this model where some of our students operate in an earn and learn model so that they're able to leave college with a job offer most of the time, as well as very limited debt. Um, the way the course, the way the degree, excuse me, operates is in year one, it can be different depending on if you're in the modern manufacturing work study or not. The normal program will start out in the first year, getting the students some basic understandings of supply chain management principles, as well as introduction to some programming and some introduction into systems, industrial and systems engineering. So in the first year, we'll hit all three of the, the different uh, disciplines and get the students a basic understanding and get them very interested in the program. And then during the second year, things get more technical. They understand and get more detailed where they start learning how to program PLCs. They learn how to not only uh, design, but also to troubleshoot basic electric circuits. Uh, they learn about drawings and schematics as well as warehouse management. They take a class that's dedicated to IT infrastructure so that they know what companies need in order to operate their IT and their, their complete IT network. And then it's followed up by if they weren't in the modern manufacturing work study program, they, they see an internship during their last semester where they're able to get some work experience and they report back to Professor Banta about how they're how they're doing on their in their internship as well as what projects have they taken and then there's finally in the uh, SCM 2601 course it's it's a capstone course where they're offered a a, a four week data analysis program that's meant to give them some to test their excel skills as well as to test their uh, analytic skills before they leave the school and they're ready to operate in the workforce. So what careers exist in logistics engineering technology or supply chain automation? Well, there's a lot more that aren't on this sheet, but these are just some of them. Logistics engineering technicians or supply chain automation technicians, warehouse distribution center managers, IE technicians, as well as operations analysts. The degrees that we offer in our department, Professor Bantas and I, are we have some one-year certificates, international commerce, supply chain management, as well as uh, two-year degrees in supply chain management, international commerce, which focuses on uh, doing business with overseas companies and also uh, has a foreign language requir requirement as well as supply chain management. And finally, the new degree that we're here talking about today, logistics engineering technology. And next is Professor Banta. 
Thank you, Chris. Yeah, so before I talk about the, the current grant um, complete, it's best to cover a little bit of history first. Uh, there are uh, two preceding grants that actually act as a series. Um, much like the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it's better if you see them in order, although you don't necessarily have to. Um, so our first NSF grant uh, established the LET degree program that Chris was just talking about. Uh, and as Chris alluded, this was done through a lot of industry feedback and input. Uh, once that was established, um, looked like it was going really, really well. We put in a second uh, proposal and got a grant from National Science Foundation to move the LET program into a work study model. Uh, now that is where the students will actually come to classes for their first year and then get paired up with a partner entity like Honda um, and work part time, go to school part time in their second year. A uh, very successful program um, goes over not only the LET program, but also um, uh, multiple engineering programs uh, and usually winds up uh, with most of those students uh, being hired full time uh, after they graduate. Then the third grant is this one, complete. Uh, and hopefully there will be a, a fourth grant. Uh, we have some ideas for some proposals uh, to follow on the third one. Um, so the, the complete grants primary goal is to share what we learned on the previous two grants with others, specifically Sinclair and Oakton, uh, but also through a network. And there are four deliverables on that grant. The first one is led by Columbus State, and it revolves around the dissemination of the information from prior grants, um, as well as what's happening currently. Uh, we do this with our formal partners, Oakton and Sinclair, as well as through continual outreach locally um, and at national level events. Second deliverable is happening to some extent at all the schools and doesn't really uh, have a lead, and it revolves around creating a quote unquote network. So we had the deliverable identified, but initially we weren't completely sure what a network looked like. Um, so through some exploration, we realized that schools like Ohio State, Ohio University, uh, and some other Ohio schools had advisory boards at the college level or at the school level, like for the business college, but not for individual programs. So we thought a network could replicate that while also ensuring local schools were all on the same page. So we formed the Ohio Supply Chain Academic Network, and our primary goal is to connect the Ohio supply chain management industry with academic partners in both higher ed and K through 12. Here are some of our current partners, and as you can see, uh, we also have uh, what we like to call supply chain adjacent partners, uh, like Ohio Department of Veteran Services, Battelle, Columbus Chamber of Commerce, uh, the Regional Airport Authority, and Mid-Ohio Regional Planning Commission. We've been in existence for about two years and pre-pandemic had some really good local speakers while also creating some really good partnerships. Um, and recently uh, a K-12 partner asked us to work with them for a virtual event connecting K-12 students with recent college graduates uh, to talk about logistics and supply chain management careers. <clears throat> the third deliverable is led by Oakton and revolves around educating faculty um, CSCC is looking to replicate some of those programs Oakton has created. And the fourth deliverable revolves around prior learning assessment. And at Columbus State, we've modeled what Sinclair has been doing and continue our work in this area. If you have any questions about our programs, feel free to reach out to either Chris or I, and we'll be happy to chat with you. And now I'll be followed by Ned from Sinclair. Ned? Thank you, Jeremy. Um, as Bob uh, had mentioned earlier, he and I are co-PIs for a National Center grant, and we're actually in the 10th year of that grant. Um, so today I wanted to, we wanted to talk a little bit about sort of the, the history of that grant, where uh, we came from and, and where we are today. I'm going to talk a little bit about a model program that we developed and a uh, e-textbook course called the Introduction to Automated Warehouse. So the um, center began actually 10 years ago, 2011, as the uh, National Center for Supply Chain Technology Education. And it had um, several uh, people that were involved in that that um, no longer are. One is Kevin Fleming. Many of you probably know Kevin. He was our <coughs> PI. And then Vince Donato, uh, who many of you probably know, 
he runs a GIS center uh, now in Kentucky. And then Erica Bowles, who has since retired. Uh, and then Bob and I uh, were there from, from the beginning. So that was our early uh, first five years. And what we did, uh, one of the things we did was develop um, a model program. We called a model program. Uh, interesting thing about this, this was industry led. Uh, we had several meetings um, uh, across the country and then virtually. And uh, our industry partner said for a introductory supply chain um, automation technician, these are the critical skills that, that they have. So we put these into a program, 37 hour program uh, that gave room if uh, a college wanted to, to do it as an AAS degree, they could add the gen eds and, and that sort of thing. So you can see it's a very mechatronics uh, oriented type, type program. So then um, we, uh, five years later in, in uh, 2016, we ask uh, the uh, NSF for five more years of the center and they granted us. And we did a little bit of rebranding and we uh, called our center the National Center for Supply Chain Automation. Uh, Colleen Malko uh, began as our uh, PI. She's since retired and Valerie Piper now is our, our PI. Uh, Bob and I are still there hanging on. And then we are fortunate to uh, have Jamie Dale who's a mechatronics expert out of um, Central Piedmont in Charlotte, North Carolina. So that's our, our core leadership team now. With um, the uh, onset of the, the uh, technology changes in automation that both uh, Jeremy and Chris uh, talked about, we thought it was necessary. We talked to the industry partners, had several more meetings and they agreed that the, the changes and enhancements in technology needed to be incorporated into our model program. So um, this year we have um, are distributing our new model program, has uh, several changes to it. And I'd like to kind of go through those changes with you. Uh, the first that are highlighted here in yellow, these are the coursework that really had very little change to them. We felt and the industry felt that these were uh, foundational to the, to the program. So you can see these are the kind of the common elements that, that stayed from the old program. Then we um, realized that there needed to be some um, changes to current uh, coursework. So for example, our ACDC, we, um, those used to be two separate courses. Uh, we felt like those needed to be put together. Industry said, you know, it's important for our students to understand both of those concepts. So we did that as a single course. Um, we did some work on the OSHA uh, uh, course as well, as well as the uh, PLC adding the variable frequency drives. We also did quite a bit of change to the introduction to the automated warehouse course, which Bob's going to uh, talk to us uh, here in just a, just a couple minutes. So uh, the OSHA, the major change we did with that was we went with the OSHA 30 certification so that a student that takes that course then should be able to sit for that certification. Uh, we, uh, we added the variable frequency drives to the PLC uh, because so many of the, uh, the industry partners said that that's a critical part now, critical element in what a technician works with and, and does. I mentioned we combined the ACDC together. And then in the introduction to automated warehouses, we added actually new topics, including networking, robotics, and cybersecurity. And we're going to talk about each one of those as, as well. So the new courses that we added to the model program uh, include the networking, the cybersecurity, the robotics. Um, with the combining of some of the other courses and all that, that gave us a total of about 42 hours, which is still within the, uh, the needs if, if uh, a college wants to create an, an AAS degree um, out of this. So let's talk about a little bit about these new courses. Uh, the first one being the, the networking. And I think what's important to really point out in this is that um, we don't necessarily expect a uh, supply chain automation technician to be an IT expert, but because so much is being driven now in the automated warehouses and distribution centers um, on the IT side and the networking is so important, for a troubleshooting, um, we really feel like the technician has to have some background in some of the topologies that are being used. 
uh, some of the standards like Ethernet, for example. And then because of the um, it, it changes in automation, especially things like AMRs um, are very wireless. So that the technician has to have some understanding from a troubleshooting standpoint of what wireless uh, technology is. So this next slide um, gives a uh, outline of, of the, the coursework, the topics you can see covers many of the protocols and, and uh, topologies and, and that sort of thing. But again, focused on the troubleshooting and, and support uh, area of that. Okay. So the second new course is a course on Internet of Things and cybersecurity. I think over the 10 years that um, I've been involved with the center, one of the um, biggest changes that we've seen in the warehouses and distribution centers is the addition of IoT devices. I mean, we're seeing cameras and printers, um, all kinds of HVAC um, equipment um, that's IoT uh, oriented. Um, so I think it's important for the technician to understand uh, a little bit about how these uh, IoT devices are um, installed and how how one would maintain in them and troubleshoot them. Now, when you go to the IO, when you start adding IoT devices, uh, by its very nature, you're opening your facilities to the internet, which opens it up to issues of cybersecurity. So, um, again, not necessarily um, want a technician to be a cybersecurity expert, but they do have to understand how um, the, the activities and the things that they do to the networks can um, be issues of cybersecurity and can cause some, some issues. So this is a, the course the outline of that, uh, that particular course. And then finally, uh, we move into to the robotics. I mentioned uh, AMR is becoming a very important uh, area. I think over the last probably two years, we've gotten as many inquiries and um, calls about using AMRs in uh, distribution facilities as, as with anything. Um, now within those uh, robotic um, systems, again, there's a lot of troubleshooting um, the different types of hardware and motion control. There's a lot of sensors that are involved in, in the robotics. So we don't necessarily uh, think that our uh, supply chain uh, automation technicians are going to be experts at programming robotics, but they do have to understand uh, from the troubleshooting uh, and maintenance standpoint what's necessary. So uh, this is the outline of the, uh, the coursework for the robotics. Again, um, focusing on the maintenance and troubleshooting uh, parts of, of uh, robotics. Okay, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, my partner, Bob Sempolsky, who's going to talk about the uh, e-textbook that uh, we have. Okay, well, thank you, Ned. Um, during our first round of NSF funding, the center identified the need for an entry level class that would survey the skills and equipment that technicians uh, should be hired, um, should have to be hired for supply chain automation uh, positions. The discussion of the curriculum led to the plans to develop uh, a textbook, which was a collaborative development between the Supply Chain Automation National Center and um, EMATE. The development tool was Apple's iBook application, and it was distributed from the iBook uh, bookstore as well as uh, Google Play, which distributed a PDF version. There are interactive crossword puzzles, um, exercises based upon the Jeopardy game, as well as links to a variety of uh, YouTube videos. And by 19, I'm sorry, by 2017, we produced a instructor's manual that provided uh, sample syllabi, textbook solutions, uh, and laboratory support for those faculty who were scheduling the course uh, with a lab meeting. Uh, okay. Uh, the layout of the current text had three small introductory chapters and a rather large chapter five that surveyed material handling equipment. Both of those are highlighted in yellow here. The widgets uh, that are referred to in the table um, are these interactive exercises that I had mentioned during the last slide. 
Um, the size of the existing Chapter 5 made it difficult to place the emphasis on robotics that we felt it needed because robotics was playing such a central role in the industry. Um, these were designed with the notion of adding more robotics at this point in the text and uh, introductory networking and cybersecurity added later in the text. Um, so the redesign of chapters one, two, and three is essential, essentially compressed them into a new chapter one. We updated the career awareness exercises and videos of the first chapter and included the new certified technician supply chain automation credential of the Manufacturing Skill Standards Central. Uh, many thanks go to Bruce Dixon of Amitrol who helped us update that part of the material. Uh, we also added a widget from the LiskOnline.com website that provides a broad overview of supply chain management. Um, the first five sections of the current chapter five uh, will essentially remain the same. They'll survey human driven devices and automated storage and retrieval systems uh, that are highlighted in yellow here. The areas highlighted in blue will focus on maintenance processes and the computerized maintenance management software that support them, as well as some automated inventory tools. Uh, and then the new material on robotics will be placed in between them. We're very excited to feature the work of the Waypoint team in a separate chapter. Um, authors who are helping us with all these efforts include Patty Katsaros and her team from Waypoint Robotics. Their plan is to include, include a, a terrific lab exercise in, on an external webpage maintained by uh, iRobot. They, they manufacture those um, automated uh, vacuums and mopping um, systems. Um, this will provide entry-level users the ability to connect web-based graphical objects together that represent code that can be executed by a virtual screen robot uh, called Root or use a Bluetooth connection and download it to a physical robot Root. Um, code levels allow programmers to move from the graphical drag and drop interface to fully textual code. Mike Ricky of Metropolitan Community College in Omaha, Nebraska is working on the material that will include the use of sensors and uh, computerized maintenance uh, management software uh, to aid in predictive maintenance. We'll note that the use of sensors in this area of the text will feature applications ranging from measurement of wear on devices that indicate a need for maintenance, the automation of inventory, and the ability for an autonomous vehicle to negotiate its route across uh, a warehouse floor. Um, a new chapter on networking and internet of things was provided by Dr. John Sands of Moraine Valley Community College. John has provided us with lab activities from the Tinkercad suite of pages that are maintained by Autodesk. Uh, Tinkercad was created by a Google engineer, Kay Beckman, to make 3D modeling accessible to the general public for our purposes Tinkercad supports the design of circuits and Arduino simulations. Uh, the chapter on cybersecurity has been provided by John Romero. Uh, John is the assistant director of the Texas A&M Cybersecurity Center. And John has provided lab activities that features the famous Enigma cipher that was used by German intelligence during World War II. If you've ever seen the 2014 movie called The Imitation Game, the story of how this cipher was broken by a group headed by Alan Turing is uh, displayed in that movie. The Enigma worked with circular shells that had letters of the alphabet rotating around a cylinder. Uh, John Romaro has provided a version of those shells that wrap around the cylinder of uh, Pringles potato chips container to demonstrate the code. Pringles and Enigma are two words that I never thought I'd be using in the same sentence, and John Romero has shown me how. Um, so the second edition of the text will also consist of chapters that are essentially untouched from the first edition. Uh, those highlighted in green are essentially revisions of existing text from the first edition, and those highlighted in blue represent new material. Uh, the addition of the new labs and the widgets will provide better support for those faculty who adopt the text. Uh, in our first edition of the text, we used uh, the Apple iBooks Author application to create the work. Unfortunately, Apple no longer supports uh, iBook Author, although they do continue to support the iBook Reader. Consequently, we've had to turn to another authoring format. 
and we'll be using EPUB, which is readable by a variety of applications, depending upon the operating system that I've displayed here on the slide. Uh, the important part of this is that after our National Center sunsets, the ebook uh, publication can be revised with open source tools such as Calibre, so that as the technologies described in the book evolve, someone can up the, update the book in the future at no cost. This would not be the case with the iBook or the uh, PDF formats that we're currently using. Um, so we hope to have a draft of the second edition of the book available by fall. Um, after that, we'll continue to support the instructor's manual by updating the lab activities for the new chapters, uh, chapter exercises with solutions, and we'll modify the sample syllabi that we're currently distributing in the instructor's manual. And this will be the center's attempt to provide uh, the type of support similar to what you find from a typical textbook publisher uh, for faculty who adopt their text. So that, um, that concludes our, our presentation. I, I'd like to thank you very much for your attention and um, our team would welcome your questions at this time.